Hey everyone, Ro here. Before I begin today, a big thank you to Gabriel for the virtual gift voucher. Huge thank you my friend for the support, it is truly appreciated, thank you. But on to today. Now today we're pondering the question, which Primarch would the Emperor choose to return? General spoiler warning to begin as we may be discussing events from across the Warhammer 40k universe, so you have been warned. But with that said, let's just jump straight in. Okay, now we've theorised about more returning Primarchs ever since Gilliman arrived back on the scene, and we've discussed Gilliman's relationships with his lost brothers and just who he may choose to return. And I think discussing the what-if scenario for each of the Primarchs returning is a fun discussion I want to have, which we'll get around to doing soon. But one factor now that really needs to be considered with any Loyalist Primarch return is the God Emperor's involvement. Because, well, if there ever is to be another return, you'd expect him to be heavily involved, if not directly responsible. However, this Emperor is no longer the rational, level-headed man he once was, or at least from what we have seen so far. The effort it takes for him to gather himself enough to speak to Gilliman even for a few short seconds, appears to be an immense undertaking. So, would it be a rational, logical decision? Or, would the seemingly split mentality of the Emperor gravitate towards a Primarch, a son, he simply had perhaps a greater instinctual affinity with? And we're talking ideal scenario here, not necessarily the easiest Primarch to return. Now obviously the first name that immediately springs to mind is Horus Lupercal. If there's one thing we have been told over the decades now, it is how Horus was the chosen son. How he more than any brother was by his father's side. And while I think a little shine has come off of this, or that it may have been a little doubted over the years, as other Primarchs have risen and shone in the spotlight, ultimately it remains true. And despite his fall, I still think the Emperor would choose Horus now, perhaps even more so because of his fall. A chance for the son of old to redeem himself the true looper cow of old. And hey, maybe not even just because of those emotional ties. There was a reason Horus was named Warmaster, and it wasn't just because he was the favoured son. Say what you will about him, he still had the best record in the Crusade, and there was a reason all his brothers envied him. However, Horus isn't simply dead. He's been wiped from existence entirely. Well, as we understand it now at least. So even the Emperor could not bring him back. So who else? Well, surprisingly to me, I feel the Emperor actually had a good relationship with all the loyal Primarchs. Except Jagatai. So let's begin with the Kargan. For me, as much as I love Jagatai, he is the least likely. His relationship with the Emperor was always strained at best, even though Jagatai ultimately saw why the Emperor hid the truth, their relationship never had the time to improve, and we don't know yet if they will ever speak in person again. And from a more practical standpoint, the Emperor couldn't necessarily be sure of what Jagatai would do militarily. He was created to be that unknown factor. I'm not saying if he returned he wouldn't be loyal, because he absolutely would be, 
I'm just saying he wouldn't be the most cooperative of options. He would be his own man, as he always is. And as such, I feel he would be the least preferred option. I may surprise a few people with the next one, but I also think another unlikely Primarch is actually Rogal Dawn. Now this is more to do with the current state of the Imperium and what I feel the Emperor would want than anything else. While I do think there's a more personal affection with a couple of other Primarchs, Dawn is undoubtedly the Emperor's Praetorian and unequivocally trusted as such. For me, I just feel the Emperor would want a more irresistible force of offensive power. Dawn's instincts or speciality will always be the fortifying aspect. It's the natural instinct that he has. The only hope the Imperium has is offense. Defending has seen it slowly but surely decline over 10,000 years. It's the whole reason for the Indomitus Crusade now. The only hope is to take the fight to the enemy. While Rogal can excel as well as anyone, it's hard to argue there's undoubtedly better options in this regard. And this to me rules out Vulcan and Korax too. Now if you're a long time subscriber you'll know I personally feel these two are perhaps two of the closest sons of the Emperor. At least from the current material we have. We've truly been blessed with some great conversations between father and these two sons. And if it was purely an emotional decision, I could easily see the Emperor choosing either of these two. Maybe with Vulcan getting the edge. However, we know it wouldn't be a purely emotional decision, and if anything, maybe more a practical one. These two Primarchs, while powerful, again just don't have the gravitas of offensive juggernauts. I can hear the cries already, but remember I'm talking about the way they instinctively lead their legions, how they would lead their sons today not their individual prowess in battle. I think we can all agree the Salamanders and Ravenguard were never top of the overwhelming false list. So, that leaves us with Sanguinius, Russ, Ferris Manus, and Lion L. Johnson. I think most of us can agree these guys all fit that bill. Now, my pick here could very well be Sanguinius. Could you imagine a returned angel leading all his successor chapters? Man, the Imperium Nihilus would tremble. But, as always with the angel, it brings me back to the feeling that we've just not seen enough interaction between him and the Emperor within the novels. We know Sanguinius is supremely loyal, we know he makes the ultimate sacrifice. We've been told it all since the dawn of time, it feels like. But I just don't think we've ever really seen why within the novels. We've never been shown enough to know why. Why Sanguinius is so devoted to his father. And so for that, I just can't pick him. I'm sure we'll get some Emperor Sanguinius moments soon. Hopefully it's quite heavy with them in his Primarch novel whenever Sanguinius' time rolls around. But for now, I just can't pick him, as I've seen the Emperor speak more fondly of the other Primarchs. And then there were three. Russ, the Lion and Ferris. Now, as much as with Sanguinius, there's not much to pick between the three here. For me, I think the Emperor would be looking for a sheer sledgehammer force, for the Imperium to slam back into the enemy. Something that would cross entire systems. And as such, I'm more inclined to lean towards Ferris or the Lion. 
As much as personally I would choose Lehman Russ, to go with a bit of a metaphor, he's much more that frost blade that would slice into the heart of the enemy. If he returned, he'd probably make a beeline straight for Abaddon, and I think the Emperor knows that too. Which, hey, maybe he would want. And Russ probably would listen to Gilliman more than either of those other brothers, but for my logic of that figurative sledgehammer, it really brings me down to Ferris or L. Johnson. Now, Ferris Manus gets a lot of disrespect for his early death in the heresy, of course losing his life to his brother Fulgrim, and his portrayal at times early on was a little bit stereotypical. However, he and it has greatly grown since then, and if you wanted an irresistible force to slam into the enemy, then the Gorgon is undoubtedly it. A fleet being led by Ferris Manus would be taking no backward step. And I've always felt the Emperor is very fond of Ferris too. We've seen him lament his loss, remarking how he needs to do something about that one day. And one of my favourite scenes in all of the heresy is the Emperor talking with Ferris as they watch the newly found Vulcan in battle you can just feel the fatherly bond. And while we've had a couple of good Emperor Lion moments too now, I'm not sure that felt quite as fatherly, much more akin to a weapon. But then maybe that's perfectly it, the cold fury weapon to unleash against the ultimate enemy. As much as Ferris deserves his respect, there's no denying Lion L. Johnson already has it. This guy was vying for Warmaster, and not just in his own mind. He defeated Conrad and broke his legion. And he had the unequivocal backing of the Emperor when he went to check Gilliman in Ultramar. So maybe for those reasons he has to take the edge. I'm really not sure which one I could side with here, the fire-hot fury of Ferris Manus, or the cold ice fury of Lion L. Johnson. Either of these Primarchs would be the perfect figurative sledgehammer to throw against the forces of chaos. Again, this is just based on the current situation within the Imperium and my opinion making a few exceptions for the source material that we have. At the end of the day, the Emperor would gladly bring back any of his lost sons. I mean, we've even still to this day seen him remarking on saving his traitor sons too, those who committed the ultimate betrayal against him. But as always guys, what do you think? Try, if you can, to put aside your feelings for your favourite Primarchs and think in terms of the current state of the Imperium. Which loyalist Primarch do you think the Emperor would want to bring back given the current situation? If, of course, he had to choose a particular one. I think he would have chosen Gilliman to be the first one regardless of it being him who did actually return because his traits matched exactly what the Imperium needs. It needed the structure and organisation that Gilliman could bring. But who would be the best option now? Or if not the best option, the one that the Emperor would think would be the best. As always guys, leave your thoughts in the comments below, I love to read them. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support truly means a lot to me, it really does. And if you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too. But with that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again real soon.